What the? Mr. Evans, if you'll just sign that report, please. I don't understand how it happened. Not around here. I thought that when we left the apartment, we'd be safer. Well, Mr. Evans, actually, you made out better than most. The doctor says your wife's going to be all right, and all you lost were a few small items and a little cash. But this thing is getting worse. What can we do? Well, it would help if everybody had a home burglary inspection. A burglary inspection? What's that? Well, it's just a walk-around inspection to check your home for protection against burglary. Many police departments all over the country today are offering home security inspections on request. Would you do that for me? I'd be delighted. What's a good time for you? Well, I have Thursday afternoon off. Would that be all right? How about 2 o'clock? Fine. You're on. Thank See you. See you Thursday at 2. All right, bye-bye. All right, let's begin with an inspection of your door locks. I had this deadbolt on the door, but it didn't do a bit of good. Well, no lock is proof positive that a burglar isn't going to break in, especially if he has time enough and determination enough. But frankly, this lock gave him very little reason to pass you by. But isn't this a deadbolt? Isn't that what you're supposed to have? Well, yes, but there's a lot of difference in locks. I recently saw a demonstration using a number of different deadbolts of different brands. The time they resisted attack was measured. Now, as you can see, the quality of a lock has a great deal to do with its degree of protection. Only one lock was able to resist this treatment for any length of time. As a matter of fact, the fellow performing the test finally gave up. But how can you tell a good deadbolt? Well, they all look alike to me. Well, strength is a primary consideration. Let me see that lock. Thank you. There you go. Pull that for me. Thank you. Now, the lock interior should be made of brass or bronze, machined from solid bar stock. The two halves are called trims, and they're held together by two attaching screws. On most deadbolts, these screws thread into posts that are part of the body of the lock. It is these posts that usually are broken by the burglar. That's what happened to your old lock. In a good deadbolt, the screws pass through the inner trim of the lock, through the latch, and thread directly into the exterior body of the lock. The screws themselves should be made of hardened steel with a minimum size of one quarter inch. Or for even greater strength, the screws pass through a steel plate. This plate prevents pulling the screws through the outer rim. The protective cylinder guard ring should be tapered and machined from solid bar stock. The bolt itself should have a throw of at least one inch. It should have a free-turning, case-hardened steel roller inside to prevent cutting with a hacksaw. When fitted together, the attaching screws are concealed to prevent easy removal. And there you have a good deadbolt. What about knobs that use keys like this one? Oh, well, there are several good key in the knob type locks. Let me show you. Now look at this. They should be of heavy construction, and the latch should have a guard bolt or a plunger like this that locks the bolt in place so that it can't be forced back by a strip of celluloid or plastic 
for like a credit card. Now this is called a deadlocking latch. But no key in the knob lock can provide the protection of a good deadbolt. Even this door should have a deadbolt. What's to prevent a burglar from breaking the glass, reaching through, and then unlocking the door? Well, burglars generally don't like to make that much noise, especially the sound of breaking glass. But just to be doubly safe, you should have a double cylinder deadbolt anytime you have glass within 40 inches of a lock. The use of a double cylinder lock also keeps a thief who may have gained entrance by another means from carrying out all your large household items. But let me caution you, a spare key should be hidden near the lock inside so that in an emergency, you can let yourself out fast. I see what you mean. Looks as though that's a very thin partition in the bottom half of this door. Is that bad? Well, it's a security hazard. Thin sections and hollow core doors are security risks. They're very badly built, easy to penetrate. You can practically put your fist through them. Solid core doors should be used on all entrances. Now, hinges are another security point. Yours are inside, but if your hinge pins were on the outside of the door, they can easily be removed, and then the door can just be lifted off. Now, there are hinges that have pins that can't be removed, but the ordinary homeowner can provide his own door security by pinning. Now, this consists of removing two screws and inserting a bolt or a metal peg in the door so that when the door is closed, the peg fits in a hole in the frame. The door can't then be lifted out by removing the hinge pin. Now, another vulnerable area in most homes is windows. I thought you said burglars don't like to break glass. Well, they don't. And they don't have to. And they're so easy to open. That latch wouldn't even slow down a burglar. What can I do? Well, one good way to secure this type of window is to drill a downward slanting hole through the top of the bottom window part way into the bottom of the top window. Then inserting a strong nail or a pin, like that. Now the window can't be lifted or jimmied open, even if the latch is forced. Now watch. Sliding windows can be easily lifted out of their grooves and removed, unless they're properly adjusted. Adjustment is made by loosening the screw, locking the roller on each end allowing the roller to be raised and removing the slack. If the window is not adjustable, you can insert screws in the top channel to prevent lifting. Never leave a window partially open. It allows a burglar to use a prying tool, and even a blocked window may not be able to stand up to that kind of pressure. Now, there are several commercially made blocking devices and locking devices for sliding glass doors and windows. Police departments don't like louvered windows. They're too easy to penetrate, even when they're locked. And as I told you before, whenever you have glass in a door within 40 inches of the lock, use a double cylinder deadbolt. What about casement windows like these? Oh, they're fine. They can usually be secured so long as the locking latch is operating properly and there isn't too much play in the mechanism. I like mine because it stays rigid even when the window's open for ventilation. Well, leaving a window open is a dangerous practice. As I explained before, every time a burglar can get leverage, he can easily pop a window or even a door. And from the outside, this window could be wrenched off with your bare hand. Yeah. If you have a lot of free play in your casement window, the crank mechanism unit must be replaced. Now, they're not very expensive, and you can do the job yourself. You know, the sliding glass door is one of the most difficult areas to secure because it has all the features of a door and a window. Well, now, I thought of that already. I put this bar in so the door couldn't be forced open. Yeah, that's very good. But, but what? But, the door can easily be lifted off. Unless you've installed pins or screws, as you would in a regular window. 
The locking mechanism on sliding glass doors is very easily forced, but there are doors available that have much more secure latches. This one, for example, has a laminated hardened steel latch that resists sawing or jimmying. The catch is reinforced with a steel strike plate to prevent peeling. There are also a number of good locking mechanisms on the market. Some of these are designed for securing with a padlock, which you can key to your regular house key. And interior locks like these prevent the thief from walking out with large items. I use this closet for storage of my tape recorders, cameras, and other valuables. I've been thinking of turning it into a strong room. Well, an interior strong room is a good idea, but I wouldn't recommend this closet. It's too difficult to secure double doors. Now, any single door closet with a good lock makes a convenient strong room. Be sure you pin the hinges. Now, double doors like this can be secured by installing flush bolts at the top and at the bottom of the dummy door. Then, when the door is closed, it is secured in such a way that no one can get to them. By the way, I want to thank you people for recovering this equipment so quickly. You really did a fine job. Well, thank you. But you had quite a bit to do with their quick recovery yourself. You see, if you hadn't inscribed your valuable articles with your driver's license number, you would have had a hard time identifying them. And the rule is, we can't give up recovered merchandise without identification. Now, if you haven't already done it, you might use this booklet to record the serial numbers of the valuables that you haven't marked. Well, thanks, I will. Now, most people don't realize it, but a garage is an extremely vulnerable area to burglary. How do you mean? Well, take this open door. A burglar cruising along the street looks in and sees the car's gone, knows that probably nobody's home. Come to think of it, this door was open on the day it happened. I think what I'll do is get one of those electronic door openers. Well, they're good. It's best to use one with multiple frequencies. Now, once the burglar is inside, most garages provide him with a pretty fair selection of tools. If the garage has a connecting door to the house, he can work completely concealed from the street. And for some reason, people will put very cheap or ineffective locks on the connecting doors. Well, Mr. Evans, you'll be glad to know that you're not all wrong. This is a very good solid core door and a good lock. Well, I'm glad I've got something right. Well, don't forget to install a deadbolt and pin the hinges, because this door goes right into your home. thing on the list is padlocks. Padlocks? Yes, almost everybody has padlocks someplace around the house. I notice you have one on your garage door. Well, I'm afraid it isn't a very good one. Well, let's just say it could be better. Now, I told you what makes a good deadbolt. Now, let me show you what makes a good padlock. Can you hold that? Hmm. Uh, several things contribute. The case of a good padlock is made of solid bar stock, so it will resist forcing. The shackle should be made of hardened steel, so it can't be cut or forced. And it should be both heel and toe locking. A pin tumbler makes the lock difficult to pick. A key retaining feature is also good because it prevents removal of the key until you've locked it. But a lock is only as good as its hasp, which should also be made of hardened steel and secured with bolts that can't be forced. If chains are used, they should also be of hardened steel and at least three-eighths of an inch thick. Now, a center top-mounted hat on your door that could be latched from the inside would give you greater security when you were at home. And another hasp and lock on this side. Even I could get through there. You ought to trim these bushes away from that window there, so a burglar can't work in there without being seen. That's why 
high, solid front fences aren't recommended. I see. Now, I bet that entranceway is pretty dark in there at night. I guess most of the place is. You know, some of the cheapest and best protection you can buy is good lighting, inside as well as out. Smart people leave a light burning when they're awake. By putting it on a timer, it'll come on when you want it to. And it doesn't do any harm to leave a radio on. The little electricity that's used is well worth the protection. Make sure all your doors and windows are locked before you leave. If you're going to be away for any length of time, have all deliveries stopped. Have a friend or relative pick up your mail. And keep your grass trimmed. Ask a neighbor to keep an eye on your house. You might even leave a key so they can check inside and perhaps change the position of the shades. If everyone did all those things, I mean had a home burglary inspection, would it really help to cut down on crime? We know it would. According to our statistics, a burglary is committed every 28 seconds. And the main reason for this is because people help the burglars. If every home had so much as good locks and used them, it would help the problem tremendously. Well, I certainly want to thank you for opening my eyes. Glad to do it. And I think that any police department around the country would give anybody a home security inspection if they just ask for it. Crime prevention is easier on us and better for you. I can testify to that. Well, Mr. Evans, here's your list. Now, don't wait too long before you implement those changes. You know, just because you've been hit once doesn't mean you're immune. Any questions? No, I don't think so. And you know what to do. Sure do. Thanks again. If every home had so much as good locks and used them, it would be of tremendous help. Well, this is one place where a burglar isn't going to get a second chance. That I can guarantee. You.